a studio called Staff and Marsh Mastering, and I'm a one-trick pony, I just do mastering. Mastering rooms aren't designed like recording studios. They aren't designed to enhance what's coming out of the speakers and make it sound really pretty and glorious so everybody can slap high fives and, and go have a beer. They're really designed to just lay bare what's going on. So monitors have to work in that environment. Not all studio monitors work in a mastering environment. My monitoring setup for midfields is the VXD line. I had great success with those. I came to them about three years ago and after trying a number of different things. And uh, when I start listening to a song, it always starts on the, on the VXTs. It sort of gives me a good baseline, gives me an understanding of sort of in general what I'm hearing. VXTs are unique in that the, the bottom end character of them is, is very smooth and very understandable. They don't have a big bump in them anywhere. They don't have a big dip in them anywhere. They, they, they drop away very gradually and very naturally. The top end extends very naturally. In a mastering sense, we're the final stage, the final chance for anybody to make any final creative decisions before the music is presented to the world, regardless of the venue. And they give me a chance to make sure that that's going to be exactly what, it's, what they expect it to be. Clients wanted the sound and sort of the vibe of what we were bringing to the stereo album to, to cross over to other media formats. So we set up 5.1. The biggest issue I had when I set up Surround was trying to not fool myself. It's really easy to plug six speakers in and throw something up and go, wow, that sounds pretty good. And it's hard to get it dialed in so that you know what you're hearing is actually an, an honest representation of what's going on so you can work on it. You know, it's the difference between a monitoring environment and a listening environment. And uh, the VXT has been great in that you can, you can really localize what's coming from each speaker and each channel. There's not such dispersion to the top end that there's, you're just swimming in, in sound. Um, in that sense, you know, you may not want that character in a home theater. You, may, you probably want to be surrounded, you want to be thrust into that environment. But in a studio environment, you really, it's preferable. To, to have localizations. It was really easy to set up surround on these speakers. As a mastering guy, I'm, I'm really not going to be going to headphones on a daily basis. But where they do come into play in my world every single day is uh, in the mixing environment. And there's no end to the number of mixes that I get where people come in and they absolutely adore their mixes. They love what they're hearing because they're listening to it on a pair of headphones, it's souping up the bottom and hyping out the top and shoving the mids forward and they can hear the vocal and all the stereo effects are really big and happy and it sounds great on those headphones in that environment, that in that world. But my job is to make it sound great everywhere and to take that experience and translate it to the public. What can I do? Can I recommend that they go buy a $6,000 set of speakers to just check things on? No, I can't. But a pair of headphones that gives you a really honest representation of what's going on they can be invaluable and to have a second set of monitors at, at really the lowest cost point you're going to find in terms of getting a set of monitors and that's the way you really have to look at it. It's not headphones, they're monitors that you strap on your head. It's a different animal and I mean it's a, it takes a lot of technology to get a little tiny speaker like that to sound like what's, what's on the wall or what's hanging on a set of speaker stands. It's not, it's not simple to do and a lot of people get it wrong. Most headphones just don't have the driver power to give you any um, so you can't use them in a recording environment. You can't get them loud enough to compete when you're tracking or when you're recording with a band. Uh, these go plenty loud, and they don't, they don't start to break up and fall apart. So if you're quiet or you're medium or you're loud, they sound pretty consistent across the board. A headphone you can trust, it's almost invaluable, almost invaluable. And it's probably the cheapest thing you'll buy for your studio. You know, most headphones make you happy. These headphones might make you sad if your mixes aren't good. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what I want my clients to have. I want my clients to get sad if their mixes aren't good. I don't want them to be fooled into thinking they're great, and then i got to come in and break their hearts. The bottom line is what we do is about music, and if you have something that helps you get closer to what the artist's vision was and helps them understand exactly what they're doing to contribute to that vision or maybe not contribute to that vision in a mixing sense, you know, they're going to be a lot better off.